Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. Yes, today we unpack the saga of the Roman Empire's spectacular rise and tragic fall that forever changed the course of history. Our story begins in the heart of Italy, where the city of Rome, not yet the grandeur we recognize today, was making a bold move. Fed up with the tyranny of their king, the Romans decided it was time for a change. They ousted their monarch, a daring act that led to the birth of the Roman Republic. The Republic was a novel idea, a radical departure from the monarchical system that had held sway. At its helm were two consuls, elected annually by an assembly of citizens. These consuls held the highest political office and wielded significant military power. But they were not absolute rulers. Their power was kept in check by the Senate, a council of elders who provided a balance of power and offered advice on matters of state. The Assembly of the People, another integral part of the Republic, offered a platform for all Roman citizens to have their say. It was here they could vote on laws and elect magistrates, giving them a stake in the governance of their city. This was a revolution in governance, an early form of democracy that allowed the people to participate in decision-making. The Republic was not just a change in political structure, it was a daring experiment in self-governance. It was a challenge to the status quo, a statement that the Romans were ready to take control of their destiny. They valued freedom, fairness and the rule of law, principles that would come to define their Republic. But Rome was not built in a day, nor was the Republic. It took time, patience, and a lot of hard work. The Romans had to navigate through political turmoil, power struggles and external threats, but they persevered, driven by their desire for a better future. Little did they know, this Republic was the start of a legacy that would endure for over 500 years. And so, the stage was set for Rome to rise from a humble city-state to a mighty Republic and eventually an empire whose influence still echoes today. So how did this humble republic become an all-conquering behemoth? Well, it's a tale of tenacity, cunning, and a bit of luck. Let's dive in, shall we? In the early days of the republic, around 509 years before the Common Era, Rome wasn't the powerhouse we know it to be. It was a small fish in a Mediterranean pond, teeming with sharks. But that was about to change. Enter the Punic Wars, a series of three brutal conflicts against the city of Carthage, Rome's biggest rival. These wars, spanning over a century, tested the mettle of the young republic. Yet Rome emerged victorious, expanding its territories across the Mediterranean and establishing itself as the dominant regional power. But Rome's rise wasn't all about military might, it was also a cultural behemoth. From the grandeur of its architecture to the eloquence of its oratory, Rome was setting the trend. Latin, the language of the Romans, became the lingua franca of the Western world, influencing the evolution of many modern languages. As the Republic grew stronger, so did its leaders. The rise of Julius Caesar, a military genius and charismatic leader, marked a significant turning point. His audacious conquests, including the defeat of the Egyptian Queen Cleopatra and her Roman ally Mark Antony, further expanded Rome's territories and influence. Yet, with all these triumphs, the Republic was not without its internal conflicts and power struggles. Caesar's increasing power led to his assassination, sparking a civil war that saw his adopted heir, Augustus, rise to the top. Augustus's victory over Antony and Cleopatra marked the end of the Republic and the dawn of the Roman Empire. But that's a story for another day. With each victory, Rome grew wealthier, stronger and more influential. From a humble Republic, it had become an all-conquering behemoth, leaving an indelible mark on the annals of history. In 27 BCE, Rome underwent a transformation as dramatic as a caterpillar morphing into a butterfly. It was a pivotal moment, a transition from a republic to an empire, a shift that would forever alter the course of history. The man at the helm of this colossal change was none other than Augustus Caesar, a figure whose name still echoes through the corridors of time. Augustus was no ordinary leader. He was a master tactician, a shrewd politician, and an ambitious visionary. He consolidated his power, established hereditary rule, and set Rome on a path to a golden era, 
an era that would be known as the Pax Romana or the Roman Peace. From 27 BCE to 180 CE, Rome basked in the glow of this extended period of peace and stability. It was a time when the empire stretched its wings, expanding its territories across the Mediterranean, becoming a dominant power and cultural hub. This was not an empire that merely conquered lands. It assimilated, it influenced, and it shaped the world in its image. During the Pax Romana, the empire was not just about military might and political power. It was also a time of tremendous intellectual and artistic growth. The stability allowed for the expansion of knowledge, the flourishing of science, and the blossoming of art. Rome was not just conquering territories, it was conquering minds, winning hearts, and shaping cultures. The achievements of this period were many, but two stand out. The Pantheon and the Colosseum, architectural marvels that continue to inspire awe and admiration even today. These were not just buildings, they were symbols of Rome's power sophistication and grandeur. Latin, the language of the Romans, spread far and wide, becoming the dominant language in the Western world and influencing the evolution of many modern languages. But Rome was more than just an empire. It was a beacon of civilization, a shining example of what humanity could achieve when it dared to dream big, when it dared to reach for the stars. And reach for the stars, Rome did. For a time it seemed as though the Roman Empire was invincible, as though it would last forever. But as we all know, nothing lasts forever. At its peak, Rome was more than just a city. It was the heart of a world. A world that extended across the Mediterranean, the beating pulse of a vast empire. Roman culture permeated every corner, from the misty coasts of Britannia to the sun-baked deserts of Egypt. The Empire's Golden Age saw titanic achievements in architecture, a testament to Roman ingenuity. The magnificent Pantheon, with its colossal dome, stood as a beacon of Roman engineering prowess. The awe-inspiring Colosseum, a marvel of design, showcased the Empire's love for spectacle and grandeur. But Rome's influence didn't stop at architectural wonders. It extended into the very words we speak. The empire's language, Latin, became the lingua franca of the Western world. It was the language of law, of science, of religion. It was the language of the empire, and it left an indelible mark on the tongues of future generations. From the Romance languages of French, Italian and Spanish, to the scientific and legal terminologies we use today, the fingerprints of Latin are everywhere. It's as if the empire whispers to us from the past through the words we use every day. The Empire's apex was not just about territorial conquests or monumental structures. It was a time of intellectual exploration and cultural expansion. It was a time when Rome became the cradle of civilization, nurturing knowledge, art and science. The Empire's golden age was a time of peace, prosperity and progress. This period, known as the Pax Romana or Roman Peace, saw the empire at its zenith, radiating its influence across the globe. But even at its height, Rome was not just shaping its own destiny, it was crafting the destiny of the world. The empire's legacy, from its language to its laws, from its architecture to its art, continues to shape our world today. Rome was not just shaping its own destiny, but the destiny of the world. But every empire has its day, and Rome was no exception. As the empire expanded, the seeds of its downfall were quietly sown. Beneath the glimmering facade of gold and marble, cracks started to appear in the Roman Empire's foundation. The empire's vast territories, while bringing wealth and resources, also brought a myriad of challenges. Internal conflicts began to gnaw at the empire's unity. The citizens, once bound by a shared vision, were now divided. The Senate, once the beacon of Roman law and order, became a battleground of personal ambitions and power struggles. The Republic, that had once valued its citizens' voices, now echoed with the whispers of conspiracy and deceit. The Roman economy, too, began to falter. Inflation became the invisible enemy that Rome couldn't defeat. As the Empire's coffers dwindled, so did the morale of its people. The promise of Roman prosperity seemed to be nothing more than a fading dream replaced by the harsh reality of economic instability. Rebellion, that old foe of empires, reared its head. The conquered territories, once awestruck by Roman might, began to question their allegiance. 
the once silent provinces now echoed with the battle cries of rebellion, further shaking the empire's foundation. And at the helm of this crumbling empire were leaders who were, to put it mildly, not up to the task. The grandeur of the imperial throne was tarnished by a succession of rulers who were more interested in personal gain than the welfare of the empire. Their misrule only added fuel to the fire, exacerbating the empire's problems. In the face of these challenges, the once mighty Roman Empire began to falter. The cracks were beginning to show. The light of Rome, which had once shone so brightly, was starting to dim. The empire that had once conquered the world was now struggling to conquer its own problems. The Roman Empire, once the epitome of power and majesty, was starting to crumble. Rome's star was starting to fade. Despite its monumental achievements, the Empire could not escape the inevitable. The cracks had begun to show and the fall of Rome was now only a matter of time. In 476 CE, a nail was driven into the heart of the Roman Empire. So let's delve into this chapter of history and see how Rome met its downfall. Rome was not built in a day, and it certainly did not fall in one either. It was a gradual process, much like a slow-motion collapse of a colossal edifice. Over time, the empire was beset by a multitude of problems, including internal conflicts, inflation and rebellions. These issues gnawed at the fabric of the empire, creating political instability and breeding discontent among the populace. Adding fuel to the fire was a series of inept leaders who, instead of stemming the tide, only managed to exacerbate the problems. It was as if the mighty empire was a ship in stormy seas, and the captain at the helm was clueless about how to navigate the vessel to safety. The final blow, however, came in the form of a Germanic king named Odoacer. This ambitious ruler had his sights set on Rome, and in 476 CE he successfully overran the once invincible empire. This marked the end of the classical era, a period that had seen Rome rise from a small city-state to a sprawling empire that held sway over vast territories. The fall of Rome also ushered in the Dark Ages, a period often associated with economic regression and cultural decline. However, it's worth noting that while Rome was crumbling in the West, the Byzantine Empire in the East continued to thrive, becoming a beacon of culture and learning for centuries to come. The fall of Rome was indeed a significant event. It marked the end of an era and the beginning of a new one. It was a time of profound change as the centralised rule that Rome had epitomised gave way to feudalism. And yet, even in its fall, Rome left behind a legacy that continues to shape the world we live in. The empire that once ruled the world was no more. Yet its echoes reverberate through time, reminding us of a civilization that once stood tall amidst the sands of time. But the story of Rome does not end with its fall. Indeed, the legacy of Rome echoes throughout the ages, resonating in the pillars of our present world. The Romans were master builders, engineers and architects. Their handiwork, from the grandeur of the Colosseum to the enduring strength of their roads and aqueducts, still stands as a testament to their ingenuity. Their architectural prowess didn't just beautify their empire, but also advanced the cause of public health, sanitation and urban planning. And who could forget their contribution to the field of law? Roman legal principles form the bedrock of many modern legal systems. The concept of innocent until proven guilty, the right to a fair trial, these are Roman legacies that remain deeply ingrained in our societies. Rome's gift to literature is equally profound. The epic tales of Virgil, the passionate verses of Ovid, have inspired generations of writers and artists, shaping Western literature as we know it. Even the very language we speak owes a debt to Rome. Latin, the tongue of the Romans, evolved into the Romance languages and has influenced the vocabulary of countless others. But let's not forget the realm of science and technology. Roman astronomers charted the heavens, their mathematicians laid down principles we still use today, and their military strategists wrote the book on battlefield tactics. In essence, Rome left an indelible mark on every facet of human endeavour. Its influence permeated every corner of its vast territories, from the sunlit olive groves of Spain to the chill forests of Britain and beyond. 
This influence did not die with the empire, but continued to shape cultures, nations and civilizations long after Rome's fall. The Roman Empire may have fallen, but its spirit lives on. From the arts to the sciences, from language to law, the legacy of Rome remains alive and vibrant, an enduring testament to the ingenuity and ambition of a civilization that once was, and a reminder of the impermanence of power and the resilience of human spirit. The fall of Rome sent ripples through time that are still felt today. The once mighty empire brought to its knees left a vacuum in its wake, and what filled this void? A system as different from the Roman Empire as night is from day. Enter, ladies and gentlemen, the era of feudalism. Feudalism, with its lords and vassals, serfs and fiefs, was a stark contrast to the structured bureaucracy of Rome. The centralized rule of the empire crumbled, giving way to a patchwork of local fiefdoms, each with its own lord at the helm. And this was not just a blip in history. Feudalism became the predominant socio-economic system in Europe for centuries to come. But while Rome fell in the west, half of it survived in the east. The Byzantine Empire, Rome's eastern half, continued to flourish. It became a beacon of culture, knowledge and power, keeping the Roman flame alive for centuries more until its fall in 1453. One of its greatest legacies was the spread of Christianity through Europe and Africa a testament to Rome's enduring influence on the spiritual landscape of the world. Rome's governance was not forgotten. Its echoes can be heard in the corridors of power today. The Republic's structure with its consul, senate and assembly of the people set a precedent for modern political systems. It became a blueprint, inspiring nations around the globe. Concepts of citizenship, voting rights and legal codes, all these owe a debt to Rome. The Roman Empire may have crumbled into the annals of history, but its legacy is far from buried. Its influence pervades our lives. From the languages we speak to the laws we follow, from the way we build our cities to the way we understand our world. It is woven into the fabric of our modern civilization. Rome may have fallen, but its influence still towers over us all. From its ashes rose a world shaped by its memory, forever under the shadow of the Roman eagle. So, what can we learn from the rise and fall of the Roman Empire? This is where the rubber meets the road, isn't it? Just like Rome wasn't built in a day, it didn't crumble overnight either. The strengths and weaknesses of its leaders, its internal turmoil, and the indomitable power of its culture and technology, they all played their part and they all left lasting lessons. Rome's tale underscores the paramount importance of good leadership, the Republic thrived under the guidance of capable consuls and senators, while the Empire saw its brightest days under wise emperors like Augustus. But poor leadership, as we've seen, can be the Achilles' heel of even the most powerful empires. Whether it's the hubris of a Caesar or the ineptitude of an Odoacer, leadership can make or break a civilization. Then there's the lesson of internal conflict. Rome was a powerhouse, yes, but it was also a cauldron of social, political and economic strife. Inflation, rebellions, political instability. These were the termites that gnawed at the foundation of the Roman Empire, gradually weakening it from within. It's a stark reminder that a house divided against itself cannot stand, as a wise man once said. But let's not forget about Rome's enduring influence, which is perhaps its most remarkable legacy. The Romans were master builders, lawmakers and thinkers. They gifted us with architectural marvels like the Pantheon and the Colosseum, with legal systems that still underpin our own, and with a wealth of knowledge in fields as diverse as astronomy, mathematics and military strategy. Latin, their language, became the lingua franca of the Western world and continues to influence our modern tongues. Rome may have fallen, but its cultural and technological legacy lives on. It's a testament to the power of innovation and the resilience of culture even in the face of adversity. The Roman Empire may be gone, but it is far from forgotten. Its legacy continues to shape our world in ways we might not even realize. So the next time you marvel at a skyscraper, debate a law or even utter a Latin phrase, remember Rome.